Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Um, this week I'm coming to you from Ottawa. So um, now I had a question on the forums this week about being able to do IK with Dform. And although it's not something that we can currently do, there is something else that we can do that is interesting uh, when looking at how you can animate with Dform and stick the feet to the ground. Um, so this week I'm going to talk about, um, how, how should I call this? Let's see. Um, Let's just calling this swapping out deforms. So um, let me show you here on this simple example that I put together. You can see I have this um, really simple cutout character. It's a stick figure that's made up of you know different pieces that you can move around. Um, when I rig this one, let me just show you how the basic rig works on this one. Um, I have peg layers for each one of the drawings in here so that you can animate each one of the drawings independently. And then you can go up the hierarchy to this parent chain um, to rotate the two of them together. And uh, I haven't really set up the pivot points on this character, so I'll just kind of do it as I go. But generally, you know, you can move the, the arms together. And you go up the hierarchy again, and you can move the entire chest around together. So similarly, I've got the feet on their own separate layers. And then from there, you can go up the hierarchy to select the entire leg and once again you can go up the hierarchy another time to move the hips as a whole layer so I might just put the pivot point of the hips there in the center and um, then of course you can move the master peg of the entire character so um, you know what I thought was kind of an interesting thing to think about doing here um, when you're animating with deforms what happens is I'll just show you on this first leg that I did here Usually what you do when you're rigging the legs is you put the offset module, or which is the top of the rig, you put it at the hip. And so you can animate very easily, um, you know, what's happening. In this case, this is a bone style deformer. So I can just move around the leg around that hip, and it works very well from, from the top down. But then what happens when you actually want to stick the feet to the ground? Um, it's really difficult from a top-down rig to do this, as I'm sure you guys know already. Um, let me just take one of these frames later on here and um, and try to do it for you. So, sorry, I've done a little bit of animation on this guy a little bit, but um, let's just bring this back up here for a second. So, let's say I want to stick this foot from the top-down rig, and I've got a keyframe here. I'll just make sure I set a keyframe on everything with F6, and I'll go a couple of frames later. And let's say I actually want him to squat. I want him to bend his knees. The way that I'd have to do it is I'd turn on my onion skin, and then I would make the character's legs bend, and then I would probably go back to the master peg, and I would move the master peg down so that it matches where the foot is there, and I would also animate, um, in this case, the foot, which, sorry, I have some pivot points on this, so, okay. So in this case, I would just animate the position of the foot here to be... Uh, to be stable, and even when you get the, um, even when you get that overlapping pretty well, because we use um, functions to define what happens between the two, you might get some of this bouncy action here. Where if we look in very very closely on what's happening at the foot level here, the first foot and the last foot are pretty similar in terms of their placement there, like they're pretty much right on top of each other. But in the frame in between, it's going down a little bit, like it's it's here, and then it goes down, and then it comes back up again to the same position. And that's because of the way that the, um, the 3D path there is, is interpolating for the peg layer. Um, one of the things that you can do, or you can try to do to see if it's going to help you, is instead of using 3D path on your pegs, like by default here, peg layers are created with 3D path. Um, if you know you want to use a separate path instead, you can set that in your preferences, um, which is going to be in the general tab and then default separate position for pegs. And that will help with that kind of thing a little bit. Um, but the thing that would be really nice to do is to be able to actually just stick that foot where it is. And with the deform rig, we can do something that we can't do with the regular rigging that we do with Animate and Anime Pro. And that is, we can swap out and change the order of the hierarchy, in a way. 
Um, we can never swap out the order of the hierarchy as it appears in our network view. But the one that we can swap out is the actual deform one. So I'll just show you here. I did it on a couple of frames and I'll show you how I did it. So um, on the second frame here, I set up a rig that's from the bottom down. So the offset module is on the bottom and so I can leave the foot where it is and then I can simply reposition the leg and then I can animate the hip back up again. And what's nice about that is although it takes a couple extra steps than the IK does, since that foot is quite literally not moving, you don't have that problem where it interpolates where it goes down, down in between. So it's actually more easy to animate even though you're not animating all the pieces together. So in other words, let me just take this frame. Um, I'm just going to copy what I have here. And I'll stick it somewhere else so that I can use it again. So, so let's say I've got this frame and I want to go a couple of frames later. And I want to actually have him bend his leg. So I can just bend the leg here. And I can rotate the hip down so that it sort of matches up with what's going on in my leg there. And you know, I might have to I might have to finagle these guys around. I haven't rigged this leg yet. I'm going to do that with you guys, so that's why this leg is kind of hanging, but but what I would do here is I would actually make this leg also sort of match what's going on. But but what's nice is do you see what's happening here when I actually look at the interpolation? That foot is stuck. It's just plain stuck cuz it's not moving. So there's no additional step that you need to do. Like when you're using the IK and Animate and Animate Pro, you can bend the whole character together, but then you have to go through this step afterwards where you have to kind of um, constrain the foot and, and um, even apart from nailing the foot in place while you're moving things, you have to afterwards stick the foot out. And then what, it, what the IK tool does is it creates keyframe on every frame calculating what the movement needs to be in order for that foot to be stuck. But here there's no calculation because the foot is quite literally not moving. So the way that you animate this is instead of animating the entire character as one whole, you just animate that foot separately and now I can go back and I can animate my chest separately. So that's the reason why I've set this character up so that the lower body is separate. I can move the entire lower body as one piece if I want to but I can move just the hips on their own if I want to. And whenever I move the, the foot, um, or sorry, the, the deform on the leg, the foot will come with it. So in other words, if I wanted to, I could still move this foot around. Um, and sorry, I could, move, I could move the entire chain here and the foot would come with it. But in this case, all I'm doing is I'm swapping to this one when I want to stick the foot. That's the only time I'm going to swap to this kind of a rig. So I can, in fact, do this kind of an animation extremely easily. Hopefully you guys can see how easy that is. Um, I'm kind of ignoring the hierarchy that I put together before, but the animation is easier. The other um, type that I put together here just for fun uh, was I did try to put a curve style deformer on the leg from the, down, from, from the ground up instead of a bone style. So um, just showing this as, a, as another example of what you could do. Um, let's put one keyframe here, and then let's try to animate this. We'll go a few frames later, and I'll show you how you can actually just, you know, like bend the leg down, let's say, like that. Now the only thing with the curve style deformer as opposed to the bone style deformer is that the curve style, you, you run the risk of going off model because um, you know, since the curve style doesn't have a, a bone that is rigid, uh, you could make this leg very easily shorter or longer than it should be. So it's just one of those things that you have to be careful of. And I can go back and and modify this chest, and bring it down a little bit, rotate it out a little bit. So now if I take a look at that movement with the curve style deformer, it looks pretty good with the curve style as well. So you can do it either with a bone style deformer or with a curve style deformer. Just tried the tried both of them there. And you see that when I swap out from one rig to the other rig, it swaps on the drawing itself. And I'll show you how I create that. But because you're swapping on the drawing, you know, it swaps at the frame where you swap the drawing. So it, it still interpolates nicely even when I swap from one to the other. Like like if I turn off my deform and I show you the animation on this, 
you can't really tell when that rig is swapping apart from the fact that if you look closely you can tell when it's a bone and when it's a curve style because it's a little bit bendy on the curve style but but apart from that you really can't tell when that rig is swapping out